Hello. In the previous module, uh, we covered uh, pressure variation in a fluid at rest. And then we solved an example problem to demonstrate uh, the concepts. And uh, finally, we also discussed uh, about the absolute pressure and gauge pressure uh, concepts. In this module, we will uh, cover uh, the concept of uh, monometry and solve an example uh, problem. So let me share my screen to go over my PowerPoint uh, notes. All right, now it should be there. So uh, today we will uh, discuss uh, monometry, which is chapter 3.3 uh, in your textbook. Uh, monometers are pressure measuring devices. The uh, monometers utilize uh, liquids, uh, liquid columns uh, that are uh, either vertical or inclined to, uh, to measure uh, pressure. These are very old uh, 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 instruments uh, for measuring uh, pressure. Now, in modern days, we have uh, many different options for measuring uh, pressure. We have different pressure transducers working with different working principles. However, monometers are still in use today. And also, uh, the uh, concepts uh, of monometer is very useful to understand uh, the uh, fluid uh, statics also to demonstrate these uh, concepts. So, um, there are many different types of uh, monometers. Uh, you know, once you understand the concepts, uh, you can design your own monometer. Uh, and you can work with any type of monometer, uh, develop equations to be able to read the uh, pressure uh, using the monometer. So what we will do is we will cover three common types of monometers, and then uh, we will uh, solve an example problem to make sure that uh, you gain competency in uh, monometer uh, equations and uh, pressure measurements using uh, monometers. So the first type, uh, common type of monometers is piezometer tubes. Uh, this is, you can consider as a container uh, reservoir where you want to measure the pressure, or you can consider this as a pipe, for example, pipeline, and you want to measure the pressure within the pipe. So you can add a, a piezometer tube type of monometer, which is here, and uh, you can measure the pressure using the elevation of the fluid column in this uh, tube. Now, these type of monometers are more suitable uh, when you have the fluid flowing in the, uh, let's say, uh, the pipe or the fluid in the reservoir uh, that, can, that is suitable to be used as a monometer fluid. So you can use the fluid in the reservoir as the monometer fluid for this type of uh, monometers. Another type of monometer is U-tube monometers. Let's say this is the pipe uh, that you want to measure the pressure. Um, however, for some reason, and one of those reasons, maybe uh, the fluid within the pipe may not be suitable uh, for, uh, to be used as a monometer fluid. Um, so you can use a U-tube monometer, which has a different uh, gauge fluid, uh, which is here with a different specific weight. And this is the fluid within the tube. So you can use a U-tube monometer. Another type of monometer is inclined tube monometer. These are uh, good to, for, for example, measuring pressure difference between two. Uh, let's say if these are A and B are pipes, you can measure the pressure difference between the two pipelines using an inclined tube monometer. So this would give you a differential pressure measurements in this setup. Um, and in this case, instead of a, of a vertical uh, you know, tube, you have an inclined uh, tube, which gives additional sensitivity in pressure measurements uh, that we will discuss uh, soon. So let's go over uh, the, each one of these uh, monometer types. And this will give you an idea about how to de uh, derive the uh, pressure equations for the different types of monometers then you can work with any type of monometers uh, that uh, will not be just specific to these three types, but if there is a different type of monometer, you should be able to develop the pressure equations, derive the pressure equations, 
or you should be able to design your own manometer for a given application of interest. So let's start with piezometer tube. This is the schematic for piezometer uh, tube manometer. So we have um, one fluid, which is the fluid within the reservoir or pipe, uh, and uh, it has the specific weight of gamma one. And what you want to do is measure H1. So once you do the reading, if you can read this height, elevation of the fluid within the pipe, you can calculate pressure. And for this purpose, we know that PA is the pressure that you want to measure. And we know that within the same fluid, if we move horizontally, pressure doesn't change. So PA is equal to P1, you can see here. So we are at this point, uh, point one. Now I will tell you a very, very important rule of thumb in monometers. Remember we discuss uh, hydrostatic pressure equation. Uh, hydrostatic pressure equation is for fluids that are at rest. Monometers contain fluids that are at rest. So hydrostatic pressure equation is valid for monometers. And uh, if you would remember, hydrostatic pressure equation uh, shows that uh, pressure increases when we move uh, down and pressure decreases when we move up. So when we are moving in a fluid uh, column, in the, in the tube, monometer tube. If we move up, pressure decreases, so we need to subtract. If we move down, pressure increases, so we need to add. Okay, so this is the rule of thumb. So let me re repeat, if we move up, we subtract. If we move down, we uh, add. So now we are at point one, and we want to move up. Um, so the whole idea is we start from one end of the manometer and then we work our way around to the other end of the manometer. And this is how we relate to pressures. So we are interested in uh, knowing pressure at point A and we want to relate it uh, to the pressure here, to the open, uh, which is open to the atmosphere. Now, Remember, gauge pressure, last module we discussed that, gauge pressure uh, is with respect to the atmospheric pressure. So if we work with gauge pressures here, since it's open to the atmosphere, pressure at this point is atmospheric pressure. And if we want to express this pressure at this point, which is atmospheric pressure, in terms of gauge pressure, remember gauge pressure is with respect to atmospheric pressure, then gauge pressure at this point is simply zero, okay? If we express pressure in terms of gauge pressure, pressure is equal to zero because pressure at this point, uh, pressure at this point with respect to atmospheric pressure is zero, okay? So um, gauge pressure here is uh, zero. So we start from here, point A, we move horizontally, no pressure change, PA equals to P1. Then we move up, we move up. So remember, uh, the rule of thumb is when we move up, we subtract, we subtract pressure. So we subtract here, right, PA minus. Then we subtract, the pressure change is gamma one, H1. This is from uh, the hydrostatic pressure equation. Remember when we move up, pressure decreases in the amount of specific weight times uh, the vertical elevation. This is the hydrostatic pressure equation. And when we move down, pressure increases in the amount of specific weight times vertical elevation. So here we have PA here minus gamma one H1, which is specific weight of this fluid and H1 is the reading here and it should be equal to the pressure here. And since we are working with gauge pressure at the free surface, gauge pressure is equal to zero because pressure here is atmospheric pressure, which means that it is if gauge pressure is equal to zero. If you were working with absolute pressure, then pressure at the free surface 
would be atmospheric pressure. So working with gauge pressure in uh, problems that involve free surfaces such as here, and remember free surface is the liquid gas interface. So if, uh, when we are working with problems with free surfaces, uh, pressure, uh, gauge pressure, working with gauge pressure often provides uh, important simplifications. So now our equation is PA minus gamma one H one equals to gauge pressure of zero. So from here, you can show that PA is equal to specific weight uh, times height, vertical elevation. So now this is a fluid that you know, okay, in the container. So you can look up the specific weight value for this uh, fluid from the tables. If it is water, you can look it up. If it is oil, etc., whatever the fluid is, you can obtain this specific weight. So this is uh, a known quantity. H is a quantity that you can read. So you can put a ruler here, you can measure the vertical elevation. And if you read H, the vertical elevation, you can easily calculate pressure within the pipe. So this is how it works. This is a very simple type of uh, monometer. So now let's move to a more uh, advanced type of uh, monometer, uh, the YouTube monometer. Now, this is the uh, you know, pipe or container that we want to measure the uh, pressure. Let's say we are interested in PA here at this point. It has a specific uh, weight of gamma one, this fluid. And uh, we know the vertical uh, elevation or vertical uh, uh, distances between interfaces. You can easily measure those again using a ruler or uh, some sort. So you can measure these vertical distances. And now we have another uh, specific weight for the monometer uh, fluid here. Uh, again, we start from one end of the monometer and we work our way around to the other end. We can start from the left end of the monometer or we can start from the right end of the monometer. It doesn't matter, okay? So now uh, we start from, let's say, left uh, side. So pressure at this point is PA. Um, we are moving horizontally within the same fluid. So it is at point one, pressure is still PA. Okay, so we are here. So now we are at this point. We move down to the interface. Here's a, a important thing. We cannot move horizontally here and assume that uh, pressure at point one is equal to pressure at this point because the uh, fluid changes. This is a different fluid, this is a different fluid. If it was the same fluid, we could move across. But since these are two different fluids, we cannot move across. So we are at this point, so we need to move to the fluid interface uh, to point two. Whenever there's an interface, you need to consider the interface. So we move from point one to point two. We are moving downward, which means that we add pressure and the, we need to add specific weight of the fluid, which is gamma one, and the vertical elevation uh, difference, which is H one. So gamma one, H one. Now we are at this point. You have two options. You can move down, move horizontally, move up, but this is completely unnecessary. Now you are within a continuous fluid mass here, right? So you are here, so you can move across now because it's the same fluid. It's a continuous mass of fluid. So from point two, you can move horizontally to point three, okay? So we have PA plus gamma one H1 at this point. From this point, we move up. Since we move up, we subtract, which is here, we subtract. Now we subtract uh, this difference here there is a typo, uh, please correct in your notes. This is not Y2, this is specific weight of fluid two. So this is gamma two, okay? So we are moving up. So we are subtracting specific weight of fluid two times vertical elevation two. So here, 
So gamma 2, H2. Please correct this typo. This is gamma 2. Now we are here. We know that pressure at this point is, this is open to atmosphere, which means that pressure at this point is atmospheric pressure. If we work with gauge pressure, then pressure will be equal to zero at this point. So this is the equation that we derived from point uh, starting from A to the free surface. Now we can manipulate this expression, this equation, to obtain an expression for the pressure at point A in terms of the quantities, uh, the elevations, and also uh, fluid properties. So PA would be equal to, this is again, this is uh, the same typo, this is specific weight of two, which is gamma two, times H2 minus gamma one H1. So this is the equation we have. So you already know the fluid within the manometer, uh, within the container, and you already know the manometer fluid. This, is, this comes with the manometer, right? So you know the specific weight two and specific weight one. Okay, so you know these quantities. You can read them from the tables if not provided to you. And elevations, H1 and H2, are very easy to read. You can read them using a ruler or some other means. So once you read H2 and H1, you can calculate the pressure in the container A or in the pipeline. Now let's move to the third type of manometer, inclined tube manometer. So for the inclined tube manometer, we have uh, you know, two, let's say in this case, two pipelines connected with this, uh, through this uh, inclined uh, tube. Uh, we have the manometer, uh, we have the fluid within the container one with a specific weight of gamma one. We have the fluid within container B with a specific uh, weight of gamma three. And we also have the manometer fluid, which has the specific weight of gamma two. Now, this angle of inclination for the inclined tube is theta. Let's say it makes angle theta with the horizontal. And you can uh, read these lengths uh, using a ruler, etc. So let's try to obtain a monometer equation for this type of uh, design. So we again, we start from one end of the monometer and work our way around to the other end. We can start from, uh, let's say, monometer, uh, sorry, uh, the pipe A, and then uh, move all the way to pipe B, or vice versa. Let's start from the left side. So here, pressure is PA. We can move horizontally. Pressure is the same. Pressure is PA at this point. Then we move down to the interface, which is point one. The since we are moving down, it is increasing. So it is positive. Uh, the specific weight of this fluid is gamma one. The vertical distance is H one. So we add gamma one H one. So at this point, our pressure is PA plus gamma one H one. Now we are within the same fluid now. So we can move across the uh, tube here and pressure is exactly the same because it's the same fluid. Now we want to move to the interface at point two. Okay, at uh, interface here. So since we are moving up, it is going to be negative. Okay, so we are adding a negative sign here. Now, when uh, in a manometer or in pressure uh, variation fluids that are at rest, remember pressure only varies in the vertical direction. So although this is inclined, only uh, direction or only length uh, or distance is important for us is the vertical distance, okay? So using this angle theta, which is uh, from geometry, you can show that this angle is also theta here with the horizontal. So you can calculate this vertical distance as L2 times sine theta. So L2 times sine theta 
will give us the vertical elevation difference between uh, this point and point two. So we have negative, this time our manometer uh, fluid is uh, two, so specific weight of two, gamma two, times vertical distance of L2 sine theta. Now we are at this point. We want to move up to this point, right? So this is the next step. So since we are moving up, again, we are subtracting. This time our specific weight is gamma three and the vertical uh, elevation difference is H3. So we are subtracting gamma three H3 here. And now we are at this point, and if we move horizontal, pressure will not change. So we can move from this point to this point, and it will be equal to pressure at point B, so PB. So this is the equation that we derived for this monometer. Again, typically these type of monometers would be used for measuring differential pressure between the two, let's say pipes or containers. So what is important for us is PA minus PB, which is the pressure difference. So we can manipulate this equation as PA minus PB equals to gamma two L two sine theta plus gamma three H three minus gamma one H one. So this is the equation uh, that you would be able to derive. Now, um, if you want to make this monometer more sensitive, Obviously, you want to reduce the angle here, sine theta. If you reduce the angle, then you would have a larger L2 uh, for the same amount of H. So this means that you can put more markers and easier re uh, reading uh, of the uh, changes of the water level or the fluid level here. So you can basically increase the resolution of the monometer by decreasing the angle uh, theta. Now let's solve an example problem to demonstrate uh, the concepts that you learned about uh, monometers. Um, in this problem, let's assume that uh, you want to, uh, you designed a monometer to measure vapor pressure. So uh, in your design, uh, you have uh, a YouTube uh, monometer, one end is closed, one end is open. So it is open to the ambient or atmospheric conditions. Uh, let's say uh, you use one liquid with a specific gravity of 0.9 as the monometer uh, fluid, uh, as, the, as the liquid that you want to measure the pr uh, vapor pressure. And you also have uh, mercury as the monometer uh, fluid. Uh, specific weight of mercury is given, which is here, uh, 133,000 Newton per meter cube. Since specific weight of mercury is very large, it is uh, a very desirable uh, monometer fluid, typically. This is the liquid that you want to measure the vapor pressure. So initially, let's say uh, you don't have any, uh, you know, this is, let's say, initially absolute vacuum, you let the system stay so liquid uh, will uh, fill in this uh, space, the molecules that escape from the liquid will fill in this space and form uh, a saturation condition or the equilibrium condition where the pressure builds up to the vapor pressure as we discussed uh, in earlier modules. So we know the vertical elevations uh, in different uh, fluid columns and we are asked to find the vapor pressure of the liquid if uh, for the ambient, absolute ambient pressure of 91 kilopascal. Now here it's important, it says absolute pressure, absolute ambient pressure of 91 kilopascal. So we cannot simply assume that this is gauge pressure is zero because we are given with the absolute ambient pressure and this is, uh, I mean, you can start with absolute uh, gauge pressure of zero, but you need to consider this uh, absolute ambient pressure to be able to calculate the vapor uh, pressure. Now, here I would recommend you to pause the video, 
uh, try to solve this problem on your own and then restart the video and compare your solution uh, with the solution that we will now uh, discuss next. So here is the problem schematic uh, for your convenience on the right. Again, we start from um, we start from one uh, uh, from one end of the monometer and. Uh, we uh, go around uh, uh, to the other end of the manometer. So let's start from the left side. We know that uh, pressure here is vapor pressure. So PV here at, uh, at this point. So we move uh, through this liquid to the next interface, uh, interface with mercury. Uh, so we need uh, the, since we are moving down, pressure increases, so we have, we need to add. Uh, so this is specific weight of the liquid multiplied by uh, the vertical distance, which is 1.22 meters given in the problem. Now we are at this interface. We cannot simply move across because it's not the same fluid, but we can move to this point and then move across. So when we move from the interface with the liquid to this point, uh, we are moving downward so we need to add the distance is 0 0.203 meters, which is 203 millimeter corresponds to 0 0.2 of three meters. And the fluid is now mercury. So we need to multiply this with the specific weight of mercury. Now we are at this point, we move across. And from this point on, it is air or whatever the ambient fluid is. And we know that pressure at this point is 91,000 Pascal absolute pressure, which is given in the problem. Uh, since we are working with absolute pressure, we specify it here. Okay, so 91,000 uh, Pascal absolute pressure. So it is not zero pressure because it's absolute pressure. So what we need to know is specific weight of mercury is given in the problem statement. Uh, we need to know the specific weight of liquid. Uh, it's not directly given in the problem, but we can calculate specific weight of liquid. Remember the definition of specific weight uh, is density times gravitational acceleration. And we will do exactly the same trick that we did it in the previous modules. Uh, so what we do is we multiply this by density of water and divide it with density of water. So basically we are not doing anything. We are multiplying it with one, okay? Multiply and divide with the same value means we are multiplying with one. So this is the mathematical trick that we apply here. So if we consider uh, this term, this is density of liquid divided by density of water. Remember, this is the definition of specific gravity of the liquid. And uh, this ellipsoid, also represents density of water times gravitational acceleration, which is the definition of specific weight of water. So we can write a specific weight of the liquid is equal to specific gravity of the liquid times specific weight of water. Both of these quantities are known. So specific gravity of liquid is given in the problem as 0.9 and specific weight of water is 9,810 Newton per meter cube. So since now we know the specific weight of the liquid, we can plug uh, all them into this equation and uh, we can show that uh, just move these two terms to the right hand side. So now we have vapor pressure is 91,000 minus 1.22 times specific weight of uh, uh, the liquid, which is 0.9 times uh, 9810. And uh, now this is on the right side, so negative 0.203 times specific weight of mercury, which is 133,000 given in the problem statement. So if you do the calculations, you can show that vapor pressure is equal to 53,230 Pascal and absolute. So this is uh, used to show that this is absolute pressure. You can also express this in gauge pressure. You know how uh, gauge pressure uh, can be calculated. 
from absolute pressure if you know the ambient pressure. So you can do the calculation. And 53,230 Pascal absolute uh, pressure can be represented in terms of kilopascal as 53.23 kilopascal absolute. So this is uh, the end of this problem. Uh, and also this is the end of this uh, module. Thank you.